Okay, so in this lesson, what we're going to do is um, <coughs> we're going to talk about viewing, uh, we're going to review our UML and our plans, and we're going to talk about object oriented programming as it relates to code reuse and uh, your discretion in, in, in code reuse. Uh, and then we're going to talk about uh, account management is basically a human problem, and, com and basically what we're doing is we're using computers to solve, you know, human problems. And in a little more detail, we're using object oriented programming, and OOP itself is actually meant to model human behavior or the way we s solve problems in real life, although it may not seem like it out front. So, I'm going to use a simple example with the idea that analogies of object oriented programming analogies basically they all suck. Um, and the reason, the simple reason for that is they eventually don't work. Um, there's no analogy, there's no real life analogy that will explain to you the principles of object oriented programming that will work. <laughs> Eventually, the, the person trying to teach you using an analogy will eventually have to say, well, now you have to think of it differently, or now you have to make an exception, which if you're just learning this stuff, it's totally confusing. Um, and again, uh, we're going to be talking about modeling computer program like a real world problem solving. Um, and uh, uh, this is basically something I'm not really going to explain, but something we're going to do. Um, and I'm, of course, I'm going to explain on the way. So I'm hopefully going to cover this in uh, this lesson, maybe the next one. And the one after that, we'll be actually creating a method, returning values. We'll be talking about collaborative objects. And uh, I'm going to end up by saying experience counts. Now, uh, even ahead of that, we're going to talk about inheritance, polymorphism, and then I'm going to drop a bomb. Uh, and that's, uh, I'll leave that as a little bit of a surprise. Okay, so let's view our UML plans. Let's talk about OOP code reuse and your discretion and all that. So let's keep it simple. So here is our UML diagram. So I'm looking at this and uh, and this is where I'm going to go next. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to create, I've already created my validate cra class. I'm going to create my uh, method in here to uh, check if the number is positive. So again, we decided in the very beginning to put this in its own class because we said to ourselves, well, you know what, checking if the number is positive isn't really that related to the account behaviors or method, you know, what it, what account, what an account object or what a client would do. This kind of on its although if you think hard enough, you could possibly put it in here. Um, so we decided to put it in its own class. Now, in a nutshell, <coughs> Uh, without getting into too much detail, uh, I could have not have used four classes. I could have done everything in one single file. Uh, and I would have saved a lot of time, actually. Um, so why would I go to the trouble of, uh, you know, organizing my, my program in this way? And the simple answer to that is uh, uh, scalability and code reuse. I'm going to add another word here is scalability. Okay, and, and scalability... This has, uh, this is a clue about the bomb I'm going to drop later. Okay, now let's talk about code reuse. Um, this is one of the biggest ideals of object-oriented data program, and the simple idea here is if I if I create this class properly, if from the very beginning I try to create a class, uh, a validate class that can be used in other computer programs that also need to validate data. Um, if I design it properly, I could use it in other computer programs, thereby saving time. All right, uh, and that simple little little met. If, if I keep that in the back of my head when I first start to develop or to design uh, a, uh, a computer program, um, you know, hopefully in the future that that ideal will kind of um, flourish. You know, will, will kind of benefit me. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if you're going to use this class later on. Um, you know, I mean, no one can no one can predict the future. <coughs> so visually, what it looks like is now if I design this class smartly, if I design it so that I could reuse it later on, uh, what I could possibly do is I could take this class, okay, and I can move it uh, into uh, I can move it into like a different program, okay, and and use the same coding that I created earlier, and uh, and save a bunch of time, right? Uh, and that's the whole idea. Now, even if I don't, uh, even if right at the moment I can't foresee where I might reuse the class, it's still a good idea to to design your program in such a way that uh, that you know imagine that you will reuse it later on, and 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 to keep those ideals because you never know. And not only that, 
is that it also has to do with scalability. Now, um, what I want to do is if the computer, if in, in the future I need to, um, uh, I need to upgrade the computer program, add more features or remove features or change the one it has, I want to be able to do that easily without having to modify the entire program. Okay, you know, granted that it's pretty rare to go through an entire pros, an entire development process without someone coming up to you and saying well you know what it would be nice to do this and that instead of this and this um, so you know that that's also an ideal and um, and using object oriented programming we can um, you know uh, we could design that into our uh, program as well and that has to do with um, the bomb I'm gonna drop later okay the last thing we're gonna talk about is uh, your discretion in what I just talked about uh, and what I mean by that <coughs> by your discretion is you can keep it simple you can um, you know uh, you can not do any kind of planning on one extreme you can not do any kind of planning forget about the email diagrams forget about object door programming do everything in procedural have one si file with everything in, in it uh, and save time <coughs> initially because you will, uh, you know, bypass a number of steps. But uh, I could almost guarantee you, if you do that, you're basically going to screw yourself later. Because, um, you know, um, I speak from experience. Actually, um, you're gonna, you're gonna pay for it. So those are the kind of the two extremes. Uh, I, I've, t I've kind of taken the other extreme. I've taken a very simple computer program. And I've totally blown it up and talked about object oriented programming, encapsulation, scalability, uh, code reuse, and, and all of that. Um, where I've, whereas I could have done it a lot simpler. Okay. Okay, so let's get back to this and back to what we're talking about here. Okay, so um, in the next um, in the next video, I think I'm going to talk about uh, the rest of these uh, these items here. So I'll see you then.